Hey, what's up everyone? Chris here from Mixdown Online and today we're going to look at recording an acoustic guitar with a direct box. But first, if you're new here on this channel, please subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button down below in the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Now, recording an acoustic guitar with a direct box like this one. To be honest with you, this is not something I'm going to reach for when it comes to recording acoustic guitars. I always use a microphone in the studio to record an acoustic guitar. Now, what I do a lot though is to use my um, direct box or, you know, the input of my interface to record uh, an acoustic guitar during the pre-production stage or uh, during arrangements, you know, to just to lay down some ideas. That is a very fast way to get set up quickly, okay? So you can just start working on your songs right away. Plug that into the uh, acoustic guitar, right into the interface, and you're good to go. So that's the main reason why I usually use a direct box. But in a recording situation, I don't tend to reach for my direct box, okay? Uh, first of all, I don't like the sound that comes out of it, okay? It doesn't sound very good, doesn't sound natural whatsoever. Um, it sounds a bit metallic and empty and that's it. You know, I just don't like it. I love the natural sound of a guitar and capturing that with a microphone is the best way to go. But in the situation I'm going to share with you today, I actually reached out for my direct box. I did a recording a few weeks back of a live performance, uh, just an acoustic live performance with a uh, singer and a guitar player playing at the same time in the studio and we filmed everything. Now, I thought of the mix even before starting to record. Now, I knew I wanted that guitar to sound wide and full. I didn't want to end up with a mono type of feel. I wanted to have like the widest sound possible. Usually what I do, I record with two microphones. I go towards a uh, two microphone close mic technique or I use one close mic and one uh, room mic. And this is how I end up having a more uh, wider sound in my mix by getting it right at the source in the recording stage. Now in this case, I'm recording the vocals and the guitar at the same time. Now I'm going to be dealing with some bleeding, meaning that the vocal is going to go and be recorded into the um, uh, get acoustic guitar microphone. And we're going to end up with some guitar and the microphone of the singer which is normal, they're right next to each other. Okay, so that's normal, this is something I need to deal with. So miking the guitar with two microphones uh, wasn't an option for me. I just wanted to have a large, full guitar sound with, with the less bleed as possible. So this is where the direct box came in hand. I recorded the guitar with the microphone, the Mini K47, and um, the direct box, the Countryman direct box, that is the active DI, which I like a lot. And I recorded everything at the same time. So one track for the mic and the other one for the direct box and a third track for the vocals. So a total of three tracks. So the end result sounded pretty good. So I'm just going to have you watch a small clip. <laughs> Now, the singer's name is Sandra Kouemé. She's a Christian uh, French artist from Montreal. Very talented, nice voice. And this is an acoustic version of a song we're going to work on on her album in the next few months. Um, so what we see here in Cubase, okay, let's go and take a look at the mix. Uh, I'm just going to focus on the, um, the direct box technique that I'm using here. Um, I'm just going to have you listen to um, the entire thing without the direct box. Je me confie en toi. Okay, so let me show you what I did here, okay? I have my uh, direct box track right here. I'm going to mute it for now. 
And um, let's focus on the acoustic guitar track with the microphone, the Mini K47. Okay, what I did here, I just panned it a bit to the right. On the video, you see the singer and next to her, you see the guitar player. So I just wanted to keep that same natural vibe. So um, I have my singer in the, right in the center and just slightly to the right, I have my guitar. Now I added some, uh, some, some space to the guitar by adding reverb. So what I did, I added a room effect, okay? with the Ocean Way Studios plugin from a UAD, which is my favorite uh, room effect plugin. And uh, I added a reverb, a long tail reverb, which is the Fab Filter Pro R. And the reverb is filtered directly into the plugin itself by filtering out all the bottom and the top end. And uh, uh, as far as panning goes, now, like I said earlier, my uh, guitar is panned slightly to the right and the, um, the actual long tail reverb, the Fab Filter Verb, is panned to the opposite side, to the far left. Now, the room effect is panned to the left as well, but just not as far. Okay, so right there, it gives me a bit more space and a bit more of a stereo type of sound out of the acoustic guitar. So I'm just going to bypass these effects and then bring them back after. Okay, so right there, it adds a lot and that works pretty well, but I just wanted to get a step further. Okay, and this is where I used the, um, the direct box signal. And on that signal, if I bring it to the center and I solo it, I'm just gonna bypass the plugins. And this is what I had to work with. Okay, it's a pretty lousy sound. It's a pickup sound, um, which is great for live situations. When you're playing live in front of a crowd on the stage, it's perfect, okay? You plug that into your DI, plug that into the system, you're good to go. This is what it's made for. For studio recording, it's not that great. But in this situation, it's pretty handy, okay? So what I did, I added some uh, tape simulation to get a bit of saturation and some console emulation. And I added an EQ to filter out the bottom and the top end and a bit of the mid range, just to um, get rid of that fuzziness on top and the, um, the kind of ugly bottom that you get out of the pickup. And this is what I ended up with. And I added the same space as what we have on the main acoustic guitar. Uh, but this time uh, the, uh, the effects, the room effects and the reverb is right in the middle. Now, next, what I needed to look at was the polarity. Okay, so if we go here, okay, if we look at our files, if we look at the wave files here, we have the direct signal, okay, out of the direct box and we have the mic signal, okay? And you see that the uh, DI version is starting a bit earlier, okay? So something I could have done is to align both tracks together. This is something that can easily be done and that works well. But I kind of like the time difference between the two signals. It just added a bit more space, I would say, um, a bit more uh, width to the, uh, the end result. So I kept it this way. And what I did, I checked before I started to mix. And after my mix, I checked for phase problems or polarity problems. And um, I ended up switching the polarity out of the acoustic direct box signal. Okay, which sounded better. Okay, so now let's listen to the end result in context and I'm just gonna bring back the pan to the far left. So this is what I did on this recording, you know, again, it's not something I usually do a lot recording the, uh, the line signal out of an acoustic guitar, but in this case, it was pretty useful. So there you go. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and don't forget to share to like and to subscribe to this channel. All right, guys, until next time, see you.